Welcome back. This segment of the Sports Source, we got the SEC versus Big Ten all time. Overall, now look, I didn't go back game through game. I had to go and trust a website that is legitimate, so we'll hope they're right. But if you want to double check this, enjoy. Uh, the SEC all time has won 60% of their games against the Big Ten. The average score over all those games, 25 22, but it's been getting bigger and bigger. Bowl games, the SEC's won 65% of their games, 28 22. That's all time. But look at the last 10 years, and this has changed. Last 10 years, the SEC has won 69, nearly 70% of their games in bowls against the Big Ten. That score has jumped to a 34 to 18 win. And over the last five years, it's gotten bigger again. 13 and five, that's a 72% difference. And it's 35 to 19 is your score. Uh, those numbers do not include this year's bowls. This Citrus Bowl fact brought to you by Games and Things. If you didn't get what you were looking for this Christmas, do it yourself. Head to Games and Things this week because life should be fun. All right, let's take a look. A few more numbers here. Hidden edge, perhaps. Let's look at third down defense. Iowa, really, really good. Giving up only 31% on third downs. Tennessee, a third down percentage offense. They're at 43. You see, Iowa's offense is actually worse than its defense is good. Uh, they're terrible. <laughs> uh, red zone percentage. This is touchdowns. Okay, and Josh had on this earlier. Tennessee number 122 in the nation in terms of converting red zone trips into touchdowns. Not good. Iowa worse, of course. They're at 131. But look at the defenses. Tennessee's number 55. That's not bad. Iowa, number two in the country in terms of preventing touchdowns once the teams gets in the, get into the red zone. And then the one to watch, the two orange one. Points per game, Tennessee averaging 31.5 points per game allowed. Iowa allowing 13.2. There's where your game's going to be won or lost. Josh, we'll start with you. Anything you wanted to get in about the game plan, anything you disagreed with us or something you wanted to throw in there, or if you want to go into the intangibles, it's all you. Not enough time for what I disagree with. Uh, there well, you go. <laughs> uh, no, from the, the stats that you've shared there in um, previous segments, uh, I would say uh, penalties, th they can be very costly if you're talking about a game that's close margin and low scoring. Something that can make a difference we saw in a low scoring game, not typical Josh Heupel game, Texas A&M. They needed a big special teams play. Special teams step, stepped up on punt coverage. D. Williams actually down in the ball and then had the return. Mm -hmm. Iowa has a really good punter, but if D. Williams has opportunities in the open field, he can make them against Iowa. So if it's a lower scoring game and we're in the middle of the second, third quarter saying Tennessee needs some kind of spark, D. Williams has shown he can provide that. Any other intangibles? Things we Well, one for me, I, I think it's really important for Tennessee, not just as the favorite but to get off to a fast start. They play better to me, and it's, it's been the, the course of the year. Go, if you can score the first touchdown, and then you can get in kind of that rhythm, I think that helps this team so, so much, especially when they're playing away from Newman State. That's another thing that I think is an intangible, even though they may have a big crowd advantage. And you mentioned the, the punters. How about two Australian-style punters that were teammates in high school in Melbourne, Australia, and one of them may be the best punter in the country for Purdue. He averages 48 I, yards Yeah, 48 yeah. yards a game. So he averages 48 yards a game. That could lead to some returns, like Josh said. Going with Nico, you're talking about a defense. You're not as good as you are unless you meticulously prepare for what you see on tape. Okay, does this give Tennessee a little bit of an advantage since there's not a lot of tape on Nico in live fire situations? So does that give them a little bit of an advantage that Iowa couldn't prepare to the depth that it typically does? Yeah. Or is Heupel's offense so simple that they just then everybody's plug-and-play? That's the thing play. I was going to come yeah. back with. Although I will say something. The old cliche, you can't win this game with field goals. Eh, maybe you can win this game <laughs> with field goals. This one. <laughs> well, the Iowa newspapers were reported that they were caught off guard, like a lot of other people. They were well, most people knew well, long ago. Yeah. I mean, if you just, you know. <laughs> yeah, read the And then they couldn't find any tape. You know, 52 snaps, they couldn't really find any tape. So that yeah, could be, be interesting to see if – I just don't know what kind of wrinkles they would throw in because we've talked about it all year. They don't seem to be a big wrinkle team. It's kind of like – no, this is they're what not. We have Kevin Simon talked so, about the fact so that. So it, it, it may not make any difference unless Iowa says, hey, let's go send the house at the freshman and see if we can rattle him real early. Yeah, I wonder if his willingness to run the ball might give you more of a Hendon Hooker type advantage that you lost with Josh, with uh, Joe Milton this year. Yeah. I mean, you haven't had the guy who could, you know, Milton, if he ran, 
he, he made the decision and he, and he took off and it was kind of slow and clunky. Hooker was a lot more fluid. If the pocket yeah. broke down, if, if the pocket broke down on Milton, it was pretty much a sack. With if the pocket broke down on Hooker, you could get out of there, make something yeah. happen. It was like maybe Nico is going to be that type of player. Yeah, he is more dual threat in his potential out of the pocket to throw or make plays running. Uh, it, it's more of a question I have. I don't question his ability to do it. How willing will he? Yes. Uh, the in game the back, one. Yeah, the game, game. It's game one. The backup quarterback is Gaston Moore. Uh, I think part of the fear of the season was what if Nico gets hurt? He still needs to, to gain more weight. So if I, I think they're going to let him be aggressive in the passing game. In the run game, how involved is he is a question I have. Great point. All right. When we come back, prediction time. The line has moved again. It's moved twice since the show started in terms of the consensus line. We'll tell you where it is. We'll make our predictions against the spread and the over-under next on the Sports Source. Come on back.